What's up everyone? This is going to be the first video in a three-part series where we talk about convolution. So in deep learning, we hear the term convolution used a lot, but maybe you don't have the best understanding of what it, visual, or what it visually represents. So the goal of this is to give you a better understanding of what convolution represents. So to do that, we need to build up to it. So the first video will be on Fourier series. Second video will be on the Fourier transform. And then the third video, we will go into convolution. So let's start with Fourier series. So what Fourier series is, is a way to represent periodic functions using simple building block functions. So our simple building block functions are sines and cosines. So we're gonna add up a bunch of sines and cosines of higher and higher frequencies to get a more complex periodic function. So mathematically, what that means is f of x is our more complex periodic function, and we can add up uh, cosine and sine to create that. So the key thing is f of x is periodic, repeats over and over again, and our series has um, discrete values, so n equals 1, n equals 2, so on and so on. So this a sub n is that's the, represents the amplitude of cosine. The b sub n represents the amplitude of the sine waves. So you can see that these also change with n. So to give you, let's start off with a simple example. The simplest Fourier series would be just a sine wave. So I'm going to hop over to Ableton, which is music production software. Um, I'm just using this as a tool. So if you've never heard of Ableton, don't worry about it. It's no big deal. So I have a, a waveform viewer and a spectrum analyzer. So we can look at the waveform and the frequency spectrum. So let's start with a sine wave. We've all seen this before. Nice, smooth sine wave and just one single frequency in the spectrum. So now, what if we want to make a more complex uh, waveform? Well, let's start with a square wave that's made up of three frequencies. So what it sounds like is this right here. What the waveform looks like is something that closely approximates a square. The frequency as three um, frequency components, so a fundamental and two harmonics. So if we were to use the Fourier series mathematically, what this would look like is three terms. This is our fundamental. This is the height of that peak in the, in the frequency space. This is the first harmonic. So it's um, actually a three, three X. So we skip two and we go to three which is required for squares. This is the amplitude. You can see it's a little bit lower. And then this is the next harmonic, 5x. So what that looks like, if we were to plot it, here's a nice visualization of it. So you can see the amplitude of the fundamental frequency and the amplitude of the first harmonic and amplitude of the second harmonic. And when we sum together, we get a nice or a nice wave that closely approximates the square. So what if we increase the number of frequencies in the series? So let's jump up to 32 frequencies and play that. So you can see our square wave is a lot more square. It's kind of lost all its waviness and it's almost straight lines. You can see our spectrum has 32 peaks in it and the peaks are all kind of decreasing, but they're equally spaced. So what that looks like is if I was to show it mathematically, basically what the square wave looks like is this series of terms. So we use n equals one, three, five, only odd terms. And these, this is our height, which is b sub n. So you can see as n increases, the heights get lower, and then the frequency of sine just keeps increasing. So for the n equals 32, we'd have 32 terms, just like we see here, 32 peaks. 
And what we'd get if we were to plot it is a nice um, a wave that is a lot more square. It much better represents what the square wave looks like. And you can visualize what the um, what those uh, harmonics look like as they go up and up and up. So I, I added a little offset to the graph to make it look cool. And then what the spectrum would be. So this is if I were to plot n and then the heights of them. So you can see that it closely matches what we see here. The discrepancy with the height is because um, the plot is a linear scale and here in Ableton this is decibels so that's why these don't drop off as fast but yeah so that's the square wave let's um let's look at another one let's look at the saw wave so here we have the saw three so three frequencies sum together to create a somewhat of a saw wave and as just like with the square wave, as we increase the frequencies or the number of frequencies, we get a much better representation of it. So let's jump up to saw 32. Oops. So you can see our waveform looks very saw like. And another thing you'll notice is that our 32 frequencies, they're, they don't extend as far out and they're closer together. So the thing about the the Fourier series of the saw wave is that it's n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. It's every integer, whereas the square wave it was 1, 3, 5, 7, only odd integers. So that's why they are closer together and they don't extend out as far. So if I were to plot that, show you what that looks like, up the graph. So here is our plot of 32 frequencies in the, in the saw Fourier series. So you can see good approximation, lots of um, harmonics being added together. And if I plot on the same scale, you can see that my Fourier series spectrum is, they're a lot closer together compared to the square wave and they don't extend out as far. So yeah, pretty cool, huh? So that's the Fourier series. Um, with Ableton, you can you know add these things up and make even more complex waveforms. So yeah, that's one thing. You can take signs and I can just play extra notes. and just kind of play around and see what what kind of waveforms you get. So if you want to read more up on this, I would recommend a YouTube series. Let me pull that up for you real quick. It's from Stanford and the teacher's name is Brad Osgood. And yeah, so So basically there's a series called the Fourier Transform and its application by the Stanford channel. Like I said, the teacher's Brad Osgood. If you want to really get a rigorous training and explanation of Fourier series and Fourier analysis in general, you can go ahead and check out this series. And yep, so that's all I've got. If you guys like the video, uh, give me a like. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll do my best to answer. And if you want to come back for more videos, hit the subscribe button. Thanks, guys. See ya.